Ladies and gentlemen, Heidi Ho. Welcome every which way to the stream, to the show. I have a cool hair flip today. And to use my cool hair flip powers, I will be doing more BlizzCon practice because I am part of the Hearthstone tournament. There's a lot of arena players. I want to be like a constructed superhero, so I'm hoping to bash them dead. They just released the deck list uh, earlier. And I thought it was going to be complete deckless. Because if I'd known that, I wouldn't have been playing everything on stream. Apparently it's just the character classes and what they named it. So, um, darn. What we're going to be working on today is I'm going to be playing my Divine Feels deck, which is my super aggressive paladin deck that I think has been misconstructed. Uh, ordinarily, I would just be constantly tweaking and tuning stuff, but we had to submit the decks last week. So I did my best. It was feeling really good, but eh. The way this is going to be working is I'm going to be playing with my card game expert case on the line. I'm going to be talking about what my decisions are, why I think that they're okay decisions, and he'll be telling me whether it's right or wrong and giving me some reasoning. Everyone say hello to Case Kianaga in case you can say hi back. Hello, everybody. I feel so loved. Dude, you should be because oh, you are. so loved. Warm fuzzies. Because if I win this BlizzCon tournament, I will dedicate it to Sensei Case. Yeah. So... Um, they do have the lists. Let me see if I can find the list anywhere. It's six paladins, five, what is it? Six paladin, five mage, four priests, three shamans, and I'm running one of them, and uh, Afu's running the identical deck. And then, um, let's see here. Um, the Druid, I'm running one of those, uh, and that's it. All Interesting right. to see that there's only one Hunter. Yeah, I thought there was going to be three or four Hunters in the pool, which kind of shocked me, so I kind of was anti-Huntering. Right now I'm against a Priest. Fairy Dragon is amazing against Priest because it dodges a lot of the early stuff, um, like Power Word Shield. Not Power Word Shield, um, Power Word Pain. Blessing of Kings is the one I'm probably going to be throwing back because of how easy it is to just nix and kill, but it's either this or keep. This is probably what I'm going to do. Case thoughts? Yeah, I think that's true. Like, Blessing of Kings is just four damage because most of the time you're just going to get power word death. Um, you don't actually have anything that is five power naturally. Yeah. So just throwing out one Blessing of Kings is kind of like you just get four free damage in for, yeah. for four, but that's not really that much of a trade yeah the like, big thing for, a lot more the big thing for me is having fairy dragon against a priest because almost all priests are slow controlly guys oh that's a nice sure. pickup so the uh fairy dragon is like even even if the priest is going fairly aggro the fact that the priest can't just remove the fairy dragon is like a huge bonus in your favor because you have ways to pump him with yeah shattered sun and defender of argus and just like every time the the fairy dragon comes across and the priest is holding a shadow word pain is just like it, it's just the best feeling in the world that they're never going to kill it or it can just trade with a three drop and the coin so this this oh there we go so i'm going to be redemptioning argent squire and then just bashing uh just trading for same reason there's really no good um, yeah, there's really no way to clear it, so I'm just yeah. going to joint. It's it's worth considering to doing uh, just hero power instead of the Argent Squire. Oh, never mind, because I I'm sorry, I miscounted. I for some reason was computing his coin and thinking it was the wrong turn. That's I think I like that a lot more because it's more mana efficient because I can Argent Squire and Scarlet Crusader and have two dudes on the board. I just want to have lots of dude on the board because Holy Nova is really the only big threat we against me, and I have. Well. Divine Shielders. Yeah, I definitely agree. So this looks like an act of desperation, so I'm probably going to True Silver Champion and bash that, especially given that next turn I have Scarlet Crusader and Argent Protector. Yeah, I think True Silver Champion's a good one. You get uh, instant use out of the weapon that's not just for damage. For justice. Um, I think the only other option would be the Argent Protector and Squire. Or yeah. Protector and Hero Power, I should say. Um... I prefer this because he looks desperate if he's throwing down the 3-3 three, three with no plus one, plus one. Yeah, I actually think that's that's why I might think a little more about the Protector, just because it puts another two bodies on the board. But it doesn't really seem like he's got a whole lot, and like there's no reason not to play around Holy Nova basically the entire game from this point on. 
So this is looking like, let's see, how do I want to do this? So I obviously want to clear this. I think I want to clear it with the four damage because that's really efficient. Trade this away because that's fine. Next turn he's going to have Holy Nova. So I think I'm going to go Scarlet Crusader, Argent, mm. Argent, and just have a lot of Divine Shielders up. For justice. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, there's no reason to use the Argent Protector to just protect the Fairy Dragon. Yeah. Uh, because you're just you're, you're losing a 2-2 two, two, and 2 mana instead of just having extra guys on the board. And you can just use it to shield something else up later. Like, even if you Holy Novas, he actually only gets the One Fairy guy. Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, which is just, like, a really big upside. And you have... I mean, you have the, a hasty 4 damage on your, your 6 cost guy coming in next turn. Let's see, what... Potentially, anyways. Must consider. A lot of people are running Chillwind Yeti with the Priest. Which is slightly annoying, but not too annoying for this deck. And I think that next turn, I don't want an Argent Commander as much. I'd kind of prefer to Argent Protector and Hero Power and then maybe something else. Yeah, it depends on what he does too. Like yeah. the more stuff he clears, the more likely I would be pl to play the Argent Commander. Yeah. Just because four is in that Ooh. nice safe zone against a priest where he can't kill it with any of the shadow words. Yeah. And also just to try to get it in as much as you can before uh, mind control and similar things. So this is definitely bashing through. This one, I actually kind of want to bash through and then trade here. Because again, if he's silencing a 1-1, one, one, that's not good news for him. So I, I want to look for the way to apply the most pressure. And do you think the Argent Commander is the right way to do that? I mean, these are two really nice buffs and I have mana efficiency next turn. So here are my options. I can Shattered Sun Cleric to boost this. Hmm like trade and hero power i think argent commander is probably the best while trading here that's what i would be doing i definitely agree you you don't want to make yourself vulnerable to holy nova yeah. so i would be more inclined to trade a one one that got silenced than yeah. the divine shield guy and i definitely think you put out the the commander because i mean if you shattered sun and hero power then next turn your option is still just argent commander or protector power yeah. and whatever you draw this so way you have a little more flexibility, and you get more damage in, too. Like, yeah. that's not something that you can really overlook. And his Holy Nova here would just be, like, really, really marginal, I think. So that's good news. That's not bad. That's a nice one. I kind of don't want to buff this, because it's really easy for him to Shadow Word it. Um, I think what... Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to save this back for a sort of finishing type oh, move. I think what I'm going to do is trade here, Shattered Sun to buff this, uh, Argent Protector to protect my 4-3 again, and then Hero Power, and then next turn use a Blessing of Kings to kill. I think that line is the most accurate line. Victory! I don't really see any other Victory! good obvious ones, what's nice about this deck is it doesn't even permit me to make these sorts of mistakes very easily. Because <laughs> there's just not a ton of options. Well, all this one is, is like, or order matters, and then the question is Blessing of Kings or not this turn. Yeah, like, I mean, Blessing and, of Kings... And you're 100% you're correct, too, on your assessment of Blessing. Like, you want to get it to finish him off, basically. Embrace the void. So Ouch, he's nice. going to heal it to death, and we got it! 4-4-2. Yeah, Yay! Like, playing the Blessing of Kings on anything, like, you're 100% correct, because it's like, all it does is activate his Shadow or death. Yeah. So when you're going to play it, you can kind of just expect it to die immediately. And it was the same, like, your, your analysis of why you... Uh, Shattered Sun, the 1-1 one, one instead of the 4-3 is is for the exact same reason. Boom. GG, well played. 1-0. Um, I might ask you to throw down what you think would be some of the other Paladin decks. This was six Paladin decks. I'm assuming there's got to be at least one control. Likely some more beatdowns that are similar to mine. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I th a lot of the cards that you're running are good in the other Paladin decks, like the Argent Protector, uh, Argent Commander, I will the, fight with honor. was the three one, was it Scarlet Protector or Scarlet Crusader? Mm -hmm. Um, and Knife Juggler is a really good one in Paladins. I know that a couple of them were, like, kind of more mid-rangey, mm -hmm. like, Crip a while ago streamed a bunch of decks and then he kind of just stopped and played something else. So I know his Paladin deck is like mid-range. So what... I think what I want to toss back is the Defender of Argus. I think. I'd rather have a huge dude against a warrior, because they struggle with just big old dudes except with Execute. Um, there's They're very chargey, but given that I'm so aggressive, I'm not as worried about having the Defender. These are just two good cards. This is how I'd mulligan. Yeah, I think that's correct. I would probably consider the Blessing of Kings, but if I were to keep the Blessing of Kings, I would... Or if I were to ditch the Blessing of Kings, I would get the Defender of Argus still. Yeah. So it's just it's just one of the four drops, and then it's kind of like... Yeah. Which one do you want to keep? I don't think the Taunt really matters that much, so you might as well keep the yeah. instant I, I four damage. I definitely think the Taunt does not matter, because I'm either going to be beating him down... And then, my, uh, like, because he, he's going to be doing one of those control, slow, warrior-y thingies. All right, it's time to pray for no fiery war axe. <laughs> no fiery war axe one time. No for Come on, no fiery war axe! Come on, no fiery war axe! Oh, no, look, we can no analysis. We're just praying for no fiery war axe. Well, if he's not this long, he probably doesn't Boom! have it. Like, if... If I'm playing the warrior there and I have a fiery war axe in my hand, I am just going windmill slam, play that fiery war axe, kill the knife juggler, go. Like yeah. it's not even a question about whether you should do that or armor or anything. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, it's just that you know, is he a jerk? Yeah, is he slow rolling you? Know, I guess. Yeah. That's okay. annoying. So that is annoying. Ooh, that's a very nice pickup. I think though that it's still better to shattered sun cleric and say go. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. You get in uh, for five damage this turn, and like redemption will let you, like it, he can't really have cleave and more removal. Yeah. Just because of the way uh, warrior removal works. Yeah. Ooh, this so is he's not only... so good for him. That's uh, not too bad. He's only gonna remove one guy, which is fine. And then like you have the double blessing of kings, and you'll still have opportunities to get like really good value off redemption so i'm gonna knife juggler and then throw this because then i have a sick turn five because i can blessing redemption and then argent commander yeah i think that's reasonable if i threw this down i'd be getting in for seven damage mm. and then i could so this is this is like the big play to do this and to just go all in on this creature because it drops into 14 and then next turn, I can get another Blessing and a Redemption. And then drop him down to, um, four. I wonder. But given how I, that I don't know how he's going to be doing with, uh, armoring himself up, Push I prefer to have more distributed options. Yeah. Um, like, the Blessing of Kings is nice because it's for instant damage plus yeah. the 4-4. Four four. Um... And then here too, like you don't have that many minions, so you want to make sure that you have a minion in play. Yeah. <laughs> that is exceedingly good for you, actually. So how do we want to do this? So I think. Hmm. You can actually almost kill him this turn. Very, very nearly, and I think that's what I'm going to try to shoot for. So, I think I want to plus four, plus Let four, this think. one, and then just boost this one. So this is going to be seven, and six is thirteen. I think that's what I'm going to do, just get him really, really low, and he can armor up, but... Mm. My other option is to Blessing of Kings and Redemption, as was the case before. Mm. I think I if you Blessing of Kings and Redemption, you clear his board, though, rather than just hitting him. Well, if I do Blessing of Kings and... Yeah, you know what, let's... I like this more because it's like you say, I really just want to make sure that I have creatures Push on the forward. board. Yeah, like nothing... I, like, when I was 
helping playtest this deck. Nothing felt worse than having a redemption in play and no creatures. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. There's that, too. Even and on like, turn one, when you have a redemption in play, you're just like, ooh. Yeah, and there's also, you're, you're kind of being yeah, deceptive easy. here. Because it's very, like, it's very difficult for him to be able to expect seven hasty damage from you. Like, four is going to be really common with Argent, Commander, Blessing of Kings. Yeah. But you actually have seven. I have seven, oh, no, I like what you call, seven hasty damage. Well, that that's kind of a stinker. Um, uh oh, well, we got him. Well. <laughs> All right, cool. I think I'm going to kill him, Case. What do you think? Uh, there, there are other cases to be made. You could also play with him a little bit. <laughs> that was an easy 34. Oh, I got him. You can probably squeeze in another game in this one. <clears throat> yeah, these games definitely last, you know, much shorter than the <laughs> than the game. than Glacier Paw. <laughs> <laughs> than good old Glacier. And that the... name is never gonna get old. Good old Glacier Paw. Dude, I mean, a lot of people like have funny names, but they don't have sticky names, and that's what that's what we got here, man. Jaina. Good old Glacier Paw. <laughs> I will okay, so this honor. is the really hard one. So Mage, Scarlet Crusader Mage, actually any of my 1 HP dudes against the Mage is rough. Blessing of Wisdom is not good here. I, I would almost do this or this. I think these are my two options. And I think that um, like Blessing of Might with no target, like the buffs are really hard to do against a Mage. I just want to have a lot of creatures out because there's so much sweeping and removaling. Yep. Definitely um, agree. I think that I'll probably do this just because a Scarlet Crusader is a good 3-drop that wastes a lot of turns for him spending fireballs. Definitely agree. I would keep the Scarlet Crusader for a couple reasons. One, because he's going to tend to target it. <laughs> and then I'm just going to draw nothing but Blessings of Kings. So top decking the Argent command. Oh, boom! There's the Argent Squire! The light <laughs> well um, yeah, the 3-1 the he's going to tend to target with Fireblast. But he's also not going to tend to target it with other spells. Yeah. And like, it's really good to, as a redemption target because it kind of eats up four fire blasts yeah. most of the time. Usually, it this gets hit by like an arcane missile or something. So. Yeah. so the question is, do I want to scar? I think I want a Scarlet Crusader immediately because it's such an easy target for him to blast off some damage dealers. Unless he has uh, something like, oh, like a Mana Worm. And what would be the spell? So he's Fireball? Yeah. Right. Um, I think it's a pretty clear Scarlet Crusader because it's either Shattered Sun Cleric to boost this, but I'd rather just throw down the Scarlet, deal damage, and then have the Scarlet Crusader tap this sucker. I fight. Yeah, I mean, your Scarlet Crusader is probably going to trade with the Mana Worm. Because he's probably going to ping it with Fire Blast, unless yeah. he has, like, Arcane Missiles or something and gets lucky. But it trades with the Mana Worm, it, like, eats up his entire turn, and clears his board. Well, that's Booper. Um, but yeah. I wonder which one he's going to hit here. He hits a me! Yes. Interesting. Alright, so we got a knife juggler. He's certainly gonna ping here, so I can save it with a blessing of kings, but there's no guaranteed damage there. Um So as much as it stinks, I think I just knife juggler and reinforce. Because I don't have any good targets for any of my buffs, because I just don't have the chance to attack. Yeah, you could also blessing of kings and just say have a fireball or a polymorph. That's another option. I think Knife Juggler... He's already used his coin, so he can't Blizzard next turn. I think Knife Juggler is, like, pretty reasonable. Let me think. It's hard to say, though, because you either play around, like, Fireball and Polymorph, or you play around the second Clone Cold. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously the second Clone Cold is less likely, but then next turn you also have to deal with Blizzard being, like, super effective. Yeah and hitting for a double damage for anyone who missed the Pokemon reference. Oh, well, I could have cast Blessing of Wisdom on his Mana Worm. Yeah, 
but well, I guess that doesn't then you as also good. don't get the yeah you don't get a one one or you have to play the shattered sun which I guess the shattered sun is so probably frostbolt. Fine. Okay. So then he'll just probably hit me directly. Okay, so that was not that was actually not a bad turn at all. Okay. So I think here. Do I need to clear this, or do I need to batter in? I think is the most significant question. Yep, that will shape the next four or five turns. Hmm. So let me think here. So I think... I think I'm going to Blessing of Kings this guy and bash, and then put a uh, Blessing of Wisdom on the other guy. Or, uh, excuse me, on the on the four on the five five guy. Well, is that actually reasonable? I could redemption, but then it would runs the risk of redeeming the silver hand knight. I can throw down shattered sun cleric. Uh, because I need to think fast, I'm gonna blessing of kings my argent squire, and probably blessing of wisdom it too. Um, I would. Probably end up clearing. I would probably blessing it was in the one one, clear his four three, and then play the uh, redemption. Really? Oh, I meant the Argent Squire. Oh shit! I meant to. Yeah, sorry. I was just not paying attention. I'm like listening to this thing. But wisdom, the one one. I fight. Just because like it gives him two options. He can shoot the one one, which is gonna draw you a card, or he can shoot the big guy. Wait, did you say don't cast redemption? I sort of just did it because I knew I was having no time. What I, yeah, what so... I probably would have done, um, like, just in a normal game, is um, pump this guy and then throw what out to the. Do. Um... What to do. Boom! Oh. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. I probably would have pumped the five, oh, or the, the Argent Squire and then done Blessing of Wisdom on the 1 1 just to draw a card. Yeah, so. You have two choices. You can either try to present him with two threats that he wants to uh, fire blast, mm -hmm. or you can provide him with um, one threat that you can have come back with extra. Um, well, okay, so what I want to do is Shattered Sun Cleric to buff the 5-1. Blessing of Wisdom, the 1-1, one, one, and Reinforce. And leave back this, because I don't want to have all my creatures there because of Flame Strike. I would actually I would actually buff my... I would Blessing of Kings my 1-1 one, one, and clear his uh, Acolyte of Pain. And then just smash him and make a 1-1. One, one. Just, like... So, this is, uh, I think, an error that I'm going to be making a lot with this deck, is that my instinct is to want to just hit him as much as possible, because like you saw the last few games where all I did was just beat him to death. And I think I'm failing to see the reasoning behind... I mean, here this is just a really clear temptation for him to shoot that with a fireball and then only have four mana. What is that doing in the deck? Wait, I am very confused. My shield for Argus. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Well, that is the perfect pickup. That is a very nice draw. So I'm probably going to Shattered Sun the 1-1 one, one trade, kill that for two health left, and bash through. And I think it's it's not even close. Uh, yeah. For sure. You must cleanse the sun well. The battle for justice. <laughs> There's actually some, uh... The battle. Some case to be made for attacking the 3-3 three three with a 5-1 instead of the 5-5. Five five just because of flame strike which i actually think is maybe a little bit better but then he didn't play a blizzard so he doesn't have a blizzard yeah cuz and he just dropped defender argus and double leper yeah so so my reasoning so was maybe. that uh, that's weird he doesn't that's i feel like it's really weird for him to have it's not really weird for him to have but like that that was the exact reason why i would have attacked with the 5 1 on the 3 3 yeah and it's like mage is the only class where I would do that, just because of flame strike. I guess war, uh, what is it? Warlock has hellfire too. Yeah. But 
Hellfire is a lot easier to play around most of the time. And like, it's not like Hellfire is a super late play. Like, he had a lot of opportunities to play it earlier. Yeah. So. So that's probably just getting smicky smacked <laughs> with my Happy Time True Silver. But what I think I'm going to be doing here is just double blessing of wisdoming. Yeah, I would actually say double blessing wisdom the two two first and then attack. Oh wait, can you can you double it? I thought like you can only single blessing wisdom. I don't know. I would assume that you could double it. Cause I don't think that's true. I wonder. If, let's ask the chat. Can, chat, can you double blessing of wisdom something? So I think I'm going to attack him. The battle. Yeah, I think you can, yeah, I would attack him with the 2-2, but I think you can double Blessing. If you can, it's definitely the correct play here. No! No way! Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm gonna then... hit the, the card drawer, I'm gonna play a Stealth Panther, a Fairy Dragon, and this thing, and then pass, because I want to leave back a Stealth Panther in case he has other clearers. Yeah, you should also clear his... Clear his his here. Excuse me, yeah. yeah. That was not... Uh, actually, I don't even think I mentioned that, but yeah, because I want to keep it alive. Alright, hope the feels gets him. This is a this was a hard game for me um, to think through. The problem with Mage is that there's just a lot of extra variables to think through. Yeah. Because it's like, damage just falls out of the sky because all like they have a ton of spells that do damage. The Leper Gnome is what really got me, though, because, like, the double Leper Gnome Defender, I'm like, is this, an, is this a defensive deck? Is this a Cleary deck? Or is this a aggressive deck? It might be kind of like that that weird, like, sort of aggro burn deck, where it gets in, like, 10 damage early and then finishes you off with Pyroblast and Fireballs. Oh, yeah, double Pyroblast. Uh, well. Okay, so there's one Pyroblast. Well, it looks like I gotta win this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I think I lost. Well, no, hold on. Don't attack. Oh, whoops. Because no, you, get, you get extra card draws. So if you had just, like, t queued up everything to attack and then drawn your other, drawn, like, double uh, uh, Blessing of Might, then you wouldn't have been able to win. But now you can. Right? Because the only way you're going to win is to draw a True Silver Champion over a Blessing of Might plus a Knife Juggler or a Double Blessing of Might. Or Jesus, actually, I completely forgot about that. Oops. But yeah, like, especially when you have card draw on your on the table, you don't want to queue up actions. Dude, like, like, your statement is true. I just forgot I had card draw. Wow. Yeah, the, the Blessing of Wisdom persisting is actually really, really powerful. Wow. Well, in that case, guys, we're going to step away to a brief break. When we come back, we're going to do more, some more Divine Feels action with Case helping us along. Um, I, I really think that I'm making a lot of play errors uh, before today, so this is very helpful. Stay tuned. Listen to some awesome Blue Sky Black Death in the meantime. Also, Case, you're muted. <laughs>